welcome one, welcome all to the Morning Post, run by the Racing Post, of course, in association with William Hill. Dave Orton, thrilled to be with you on another Saturday morning for the next hour or so. We're going to be updating you with all you need to know about this sizzling Saturday ahead. Great stuff, isn't it? Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment and share. Put your thumbs up, you can get involved. It is an interactive show and opening it already, before I go down the panellists, is Cy Tyson, what a name, who says, good morning guys, appreciate the upcoming stream and the tips with a thumbs up. That's all you've got to do, Cy, welcome along. We love it, man, absolutely happy days. We're going to be giving you price enhancements, extra places all the way. Stick with us for the next hour or so. Live to the tracks, all that sort of thing. Before I tell you exactly what's coming up. Let's go down the panel. There's two heavyweights, quite literally. <laughs> Join the biggest heavyweight of them all, Dave Orson. Paul Keeley is back. How are you doing? I'm good, Keels. How are you? Yeah, had a week off. You know, typically got man flu during it, so I haven't done very much. Tis the season, mate, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Absolutely. G, are you, you're you back for another stint? Back for another stint, yeah. People getting used to me in the mornings <coughs> there on a Saturday, aren't they, I think? Well, this is quite right so, absolutely, and uh, it's, it's one of those lovely weekends. Let's go, of course, because we do open up the trading floor for you here live on the Morning Post, and up to the William Hill office as we go. Uh, Jamie McBride comes back off the back of a winning nap, I should say. You and Graham Robway at least gave us a bit of credibility with winning naps last week. How are you doing, Jay? Uh, very good, thanks, Dave. Morning from uh, William Hill Towers. Yep, Dave. Uh, uh, sorry, Graham putting up stage star was uh, particularly expensive for us last week, but uh, we go again. Oh, I had to mention stage star, didn't you? Shall we, <laughs> shall we do it shall now? We do? You were there, Kills, of course. I is he there. the next Ryanair superstar? Yeah. He thinks he is. I was there. I was gutted, wasn't I? Because I backed the second and the third. But, oh, don't you know, go there. It goes. Um, to win that first time out off that mark, after that mistake, and to do so so easily, he's got to be a massive player for the Ryanair, isn't he? Yes, yes, he has. And uh, Jamie, you don't like it, of course, when those colours win because about 6,000 people who own it back it. Yeah, it feels like about half the nation have a share in it and uh, they're always popular. But certainly the, 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 high, the high profile ones, the grade one horses are, are extremely popular. And, of course, uh, you were insufferable. I, I, I sort of joked with you it couldn't win. So when it walked through that last, I was like, aye, aye, come on, we'll pick it up. And it still went away. Finishes won. last was what you oh, said, me. I said, yeah, watch yeah, it. you yeah, said, yeah. watch your nap. I said, stay sharp. Finishes last was Listen. what you said. <laughs> Every dog has his day, don't they? Let's face it. We'll let Graham enjoy that. You were three from three on the show, but that's the last time I'm going to tell you about that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the price boost before we get our first big guest on the show then, Jamie. These are live now, of course. Drum roll, please. I think, what are we, week five, something like that on the morning post. Uh, all but one has been a winner for you. In Spiral did the business for the punters in the Breeders' Cup. Who are we boosting this week? We've got two for you this week. Uh, Pick Dory and Goshen, both at Ascot. So uh, Pick Dory's seven to two from five to two. And Goshen is five to one. I think we've said he was 130, but he's been drifting all morning. But uh, the five to one is still a, a good offer, hopefully. Five to one, gosh. I think that's massive. I mean, we're talking about the race in a little while, but I do think that's massive. He loves it around there, doesn't he? <laughs> Seven to two, pick Dory's massive, isn't it? Oh, my Goshen. Oh, my Goshen. Oh, yes, the first good. word, of course. Goshen comes back strong with another coral hurdle. Um... All right, OK, let's have a look at exactly what's coming up in the next hour. Stick with us, because we've got some really fiery opinions coming up from the lads, and we're having a look at the anti-post. But in the next hour, you can get this now, OK? Uh, we're hoping for Jeff Mason to come on. Protect Tracks owner, of course, Alex Ferguson. They'll all be at the track at Haydock this afternoon. We're hoping to get the word from, for, uh, from Jed on his uh, repeat winner uh, in, in waiting. Lucinda Russell will be on the line for the slow. William Mill ambassador, I can tell you that. We're going to have a look at the paper roundups so each Saturday morning. We bring to life for you what you can get on this Saturday morning in the post, uh, the biggest day of the week, of course, for the paper. Haydock previews, Ascot previews, the Irish angle, David Jennings, wasn't he superb from Cheltenham last week? We'll go across the Irish Sea and meet DJ. Sunday Sizzlers, John Durkin, Gallop in the Champ versus Fast or Slow, Mark Two. Can't wait for that. Anti post picks, Tingle Creek this week, and there is going to be a fiery debate about that and the weekend naps coming your way as well. OK, let's go to the paper roundup, shall we? Let's bring it in as we try and get Jed on the line. If it happens, it happens, because he's a great man, and we love to hear from Jed. And lots been said about Protect Track this week, and that what is why. There you go, front page of the Racing Post this Saturday morning. The Battle of Britain. G-Rod tries to tell me that he came up with that. At least he made the front page as well. In his usual slot in page two, Chris Cook 
looks forward to seeing Britain's Gold Cup contenders by saying, punters beware, many a classy performer has been turned over in the Betfair chase, if the guys like that or not. Keith Melrose, who made his debut on the show last week, the betting editor, a hungry wolf and a well-fed lion as Britain's big two face off. Of course, this is all about the Betfair chase. Down at Ascot. Another sizzling matchup, high noon, as Shishkin and Pick Dory lock horns. It's all about the re renewing rivalries, guys, isn't it? Mr. Policeman strikes but fails to impress the bookies, of course. This is the big talking horse, Willie Mullins and Rich Ritchie's novice needed the line yesterday. We'll get a word from Gills about that. What else have we got coming up for you? Ah, yes. Every Saturday, the excellent Kevin Morley. And he will be looking at this lovely booze from Hills because he thinks Goshen can stage a repeat in the Coral Hurdle. Ah, who's been watching it then? Trials, but no tribulations as Frankie impresses on I'm a Celebrity debut. James Milton deep dives into how the champion jockey of yesteryear is getting on down under. A late arrival, of course. Ah, Tom Siegel, price-wise. Take the Gal Road route in Stayers Test. Premium stuff for you here, then, if you're watching free. Uh, of course, Park Hill Dancer, Gal Road, Balbodi. That was his nap, I think, wasn't it? Just about. And Coconut Splash at Haydock in the last as well for Tom. Tomorrow morning, 6.40. Set your arms, get up, because the world's top rate is flat horse. Equinox faces his toughest test today in the Japan Cup. Of course, Holly Doyle over there, Tom Ocon down there. Is it his toughest test yet? Will it be his last race, the world's greatest racehorse? And steady but positive news. On the app, of course, we updated you yesterday. Good to hear that Graham Lee has moved to hospital closer to home. He will remain in hospital for the foreseeable future, Graham, but it is better news on the horizon, that slowly but steady. Of course, the Just Giving page remains out there. Peter Scargill, uh, the deputy industry editor, tells you all about that. All the best wishes, of course, for Graham and his family. Right, OK. Coming up to guest time. And uh, if you want to do a deep dive while we're doing the show, get the app up, of course. If you're on the William Hill website, that's great. If you're on the Racing Post website and want to become a member, this is how you do it. There we are then. You can get involved with the Members Club. If you've not done so far, come on, massive weekend, get involved. OK. All right. Shall we go uh, to William Hill Ambassador Lucinda Russell, who I think is somewhere Haydock way for us as she's about to go to all her runners. Good morning to you. Welcome to the Morning Post, Lucinda. Good morning. I'm not in the most salubrious place. I am in my car, not the camper van, <laughs> at a service station halfway down the M6. But hey, we're on the way. And hey, we'll take you wherever we can get you because another stellar cast comes out from your powerful stable. I guess we have to concentrate at Haydock, of course. And in the first race, it's, it's, it's graded novice time. And the fascinating Primoz comes out. Now, all of our tipsters in the Saturday jury here at the Post today have given this chap a right mention after his winner air. Yeah, you know, I love this horse. He's, uh, he's exactly our type, big, strong type. Um, he won really nicely at air. Stephen McQueen rode him that day, and I don't think he really was fully extended. Um, he's a very, very exciting horse. He deserves his crack up. Obviously, he lacks a bit of experience compared to some of them, but, you know, he's he just deserves a, a crack at a decent prize. He, well, yeah, he is on the slide. He beat some good horses at air, didn't he? The entry bumper when, of course, Florida Dreams, Ollie Murphy had a well-touted one in there. Obviously, you got him after he finished second in two points. Trip-wise, what are we expecting today? Just let him sort of get into a rhythm and bowl on? Yeah, I mean, I think he will, yeah, he will stay further. Um, but at the moment, he's got quite high cruising speed, so I think the two miles will be fine for him. Um, yeah, you're right. I remember thinking about that air race that actually it turned out to be one of the hottest novices up up with us. But uh, anyway, he still won. He certainly did. All right. Now, on everyone's lips this morning is the crack mare. It's Apple away. We've seen the entry form being boosted left, right and centre. And she makes her eagerly anticipated chasing debut in the graduation event. 
Yeah, we've been waiting, waiting. She's been ready to run since the, oh, I don't know, the start of October. But uh, we've sort of shimmied away from a few races because of the ground. And um, and even today, we could have run her down at Huntingdon, but the ground had gone a bit quicker there. So she comes here, she gets loads and loads of weight advantages because she's a mare, but, and she hasn't won. Uh, but she, I don't know, she likes a bit of experience, but you know, this is the situation that we're in. We've we've got to let her get some experience and, and get us to jump around. I think it's the right the right track and the right well, she probably needs a bit further, but you know, we, we need to get her on, on track and, and get her going. And I, I think she's got an awful lot of ability there. Well, I don't think you're alone in that. I think she's got a huge following. Racing Twitter loves this mare, rightly so, of course. Aintree, Grey Bun novices, we know what happens with your stable and them. Uh, are, are you working back from anything with her, Lucinda, all being well? Just working back from the spring, really. Um, so, yeah, that's why we have to crack on and get a, get some racing into her. OK, well, she's obviously got a whopping chance. Uh, now, let's go to the big one, shall we? It's the Betfair chase, of course, at three o'clock. And we're all thrilled to see him there. I don't imagine you were totally thrilled with his comeback at Kelso, though. It's your grand national winner, Corrett Rambler. Yeah, look, he. Um, I think last season he improved sort of £28 from his first and second run. So I think we can excuse him that run at, at Kelso. He's always going to take a little bit of... Um, a little bit of uh, extra work, shall we say, to get going and really be right. And I, I remember being a little bit disappointed because we had taken him for a race course gallop, but he's just a horse as he gets older. He's just going to need a little bit more work to get him absolutely tip top. So um, this is a very, very big ask for him today. He's got to improve on, he's got to improve on his ultimate form. He's got to improve on lots of things, but uh, we want to get him back. We want to see whether we... Look, he's, his, his next run will probably be at Cheltenham and it's whether it's in the Gold Cup or whether we go back to the Altimore again. Is he going to have the winter off then? Is that the plan? Give him another elongated break like he had last season? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the thing is with horses, you can't make huge plans before they run. We have to see how he comes out of the race and, and, and what happens. But I wouldn't be afraid to give him a, a, a break between now and, and Cheltenham. All right, OK. Well, look, pick up the Racing Post today, Lucinda, because lots of our judges and scribes are saying about how there can be turnovers in this race, of course. And uh, we've seen, haven't we, with the Hoy Senor, we won't talk about him today because we're going to have you on the show in the coming weeks, how these horses can just improve massively from their first runs, especially from your stable. In the final race at Haydock, then, one perhaps that viewers don't know about so much is O Esteem. Is that how I'm pronouncing it? He's a staying chaser in the last, that's for sure. Yeah, so she had a she was travelling beautifully at um her in, in September and then had a horrible fall, like really just crashed the ground. So we gave her a bit of time and her run back last time was really a, a confidence boost for her. Yeah, with these fillies that are chasing you you have to take care of them and, and make sure that they are really confident. And um I just feel that she has improved since that run. So look, this is her thing. She's she needs extreme distances, she needs probably as soft ground as you can get. Um, but she's she's got an each way each way chance. Well, the punters agree with you, and so do William Hill because she's been backed in at the moment, currently around about seven to two with Hills out there. Right, let's look further afield. It's not just about Adoc. Of course, Corrigine Rock career best last time, and he goes in one of the feature handicaps down at Ascot at three fifteen. Yeah, look, she he this has been a remarkable horse. We um, he's owned by some owners that live in uh, London, or most of them live in London. It's a racing club, racing society that's based in London. And uh, they like him running at those tracks. And um, he's brilliant around Sandown. He was very good around Kempton. Um, I don't know how he's going to be around Ascot. His last run around Ascot wasn't quite so good. But um, that said, he deserves his chance in this race. It's very valuable. And uh, I think they're all turning up to see him. So if he can enjoy the track, uh, Patrick Wodge rides him. He actually rides him all the time at home and has one on him at, at Perth as well. So, um, uh, you know, this, this could be his day for a really big prize. Oh, all the owners going there nine to one with Hills as we record, guys out there. If you want to get involved, three fifteen at Ascot. We'll be previewing that race solely for you amongst our Ascot previews. Uh, there's, there is an interesting runner at Huntingdon. You reference that you might go there with Apple away, and I have to look down for the name of this chap. No more diamonds. Who? Uh, it's fair to say had an interesting debut at Aintree. Yes, I think the uh, intractable was probably the right expression for him. Um, he's a sweet little horse. He. Uh, is a is a junior horse who was in training all last season for, with us. So though he's only three, he's actually already had a full season's training, and uh, that's what we like doing with these youngsters. But um, he at Aintree, he just took off, and he was very very strong. And poor Connor struggled with him, and unfortunately ended up heading towards the Aintree Grand National Course, which was a little bit presumptuous of him. Uh, but anyway, he uh, couldn't couldn't turn him, couldn't turn him left. So we're off to a right-handed track. 
Um, and uh, we'll just see see how he gets on. Alan Doyle is making his comeback. Um, he's got his licence back after uh, losing it for uh, substance abuse. So um, he's been working so hard at home for us. I'm delighted that he's back on track as well. Um, and if he can keep a hold of no more diamonds, then he's he's got a chance of being in the, you know, being placed. All right, brilliant stuff. That's it. We've gone through your runners, Lucinda. Thanks for making the pit stop on your way to Haydock. Uh, we wish you all the best. It sounds like, without putting words into your mouth, I mean, Primoz, I think, is one you're excited about in the opener. Could get you off to a flyer. Yeah, I absolutely adore Primoz, and actually I do do own a share in them, so that helps as well. <laughs> it absolutely does. All right, all the best to you, Scoo, and the team today. Fingers crossed for more success. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lucinda. There was Scoo as well, typically waiting in the wings. Talking of waiting in the wings, that was great for you out there, wasn't it? Uh, let's ramp it up now, because I'm thrilled to say live, this is live television, and uh, not quite where we thought he was going to be in the running order, but Jed Mason, owner of Protectora, is on. There he is, Jed. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Post. Good morning. Apologies for getting on. I was a bit late there. It's, uh, technology is not my greatest subject. Have you only just got back from Bahrain, Jed? I can imagine that was some old, <laughs> some old knees up out there, wasn't it, after you and Sir Alex? Must... That was fantastic to watch, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was uh, an unbelievable trip, really. Um, so fortunate to have gone out there and to have especially gone with Sir Alex. Uh, with all what's just happened in, in his life, you know, it was nice to spe spend some time and um, yeah, we were well treated out there and a little bit unexpected. I mean, we were hoping, you know, a nice placing would have done really good, but uh, to win it was just wow. And uh, yeah, it, it curtailed the party in. <laughs> well, we know what you're like, Jed. Of course, you'll be hoping to do that. You and Sir Alex, of course, and John Ells this afternoon, because at three o'clock at Haydock, you'll all be fingers crossed and hoping that the FA Cup final, I think we can call it that, can't we, of Protector at happens again. Of course, this was his big win last year. Absolutely hosed up in the race. He goes for a repeat. It's all systems go. I guess we must talk about what it must be like as an owner, hearing your trainer saying, I'm slightly worried about the form, first time out of my runners. Dan's been making a lot of noises about that. Yeah, I guess it's probably on the back of that, that, you know, a few other horses that I've run, we've had with him ourselves, even uh, ITAP Blue, and, um, you know, they've not necessarily run at the best the first time out. So, yeah, but Patakarat's been working well at home and we've had nothing but positive, uh, you know, uh, comments back and the ground we probably would have liked it a bit more uh, wetter. <laughs> but um, it is what it is and we'll, we'll take on uh, Brave Man's game. Well, and after, the others. after Bahrain, you must be absolutely high on confidence as usual. We had a winner at Chepstow, which I want to talk to you about in a minute yesterday as well. And of course, you know Paul very well. You know, you know, you're really good mates with him. Of course, Dan, the former protege. They've got nicknames and horses we're hearing as well. And uh, what is the, come on, the inside word from the camp? I mean, Paul's obviously, you know, he's, he, he must be bullish. Paul is, yeah, he's very bullish, uh, brave man's game. Yeah, we, have, we do have a, a good banter. There's good respect between, obviously, Dan and uh, and Paul, naturally. Um, but uh, gloves will be off at the racetrack. Um, I call he he calls my horse Prataka crap, and I call his horse, I, I call his horse Soft Man's Game. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> Soft Man's Game! Day. All right, I love it. You revealed it, which I'm happy about. Jed, that's worth so, his weight in gold. Absolutely so super. Battle, let, let, but let's not forget the other horses, you know, because they're all threats as well, and they they justifiably deserve to be in the race and uh, you know it's not just the focus on our two it's you know it's the other horses as well which um, yeah it'd be exciting and um, surprise it's not a bigger field to be honest but you know it uh, gives us more of a chance hopefully fingers crossed and uh, yeah hopefully Dan's got him there with with the team skeleton got him there right all right, well, listen, just pick up the post today, uh, uh, Jed. You'll see the Battle of Britain. It's a small but select field. The right horses are there. So we can't wait for that. Let's just have a little chat about Isaac de Zobo yesterday. Of course, memories of Clan de Zobo, Dan from the same family. It's fair to say that he, this guy loves Chepstow, of course. If you haven't seen it, viewers, get on the members club at the racing post. You can see the replay yesterday. A 1-2 for Paul in the, in the second race there. He absolutely hosed up, didn't he? He did really, yeah. I'm surprised he won by that. that I mean, let's um, I'm with his head in the uh, head in his chest as well, didn't he? So he's pricked and um, yeah, loved, loved seeing him over the hurdles there. And crikey, if he could be half as good as Clans the Oboe, what fun would we get? What fun would we have? So I know uh, Paul's uh, 
keen on him and soft in him. But um, yeah, exciting prospect. Obviously, not get too carried away. It's still early tours, and it's only a maiden, wasn't it? So, but um, showed all, showed all the right signs, and uh, he's uh, he's built for the distance. So, I don't think uh, future chasing is where his prospects lie. So, yeah, again, you just hope they keep sound and keep on progressing. There's a lovely project for you there, Jed, I think, and, uh, th- th- you and Paul. Can you give us, while we've got you, Jed, maybe some future names coming out? You've got any babies that we've not seen yet, etc. What's the word on Mon Morel et al? Yeah, Mon Morel has uh, been a slightly disappointing, hasn't he, really? You know, after bouncing, uh, you know, as a young horse there, and um, it, it, yeah, he's, he's coming back. We're not rushing, we're being patient. Um, you know, he's doing some light works now and him stepping up. So, yeah, Mon Morel... Um, yeah, they've got a few, a uh, few, few horses there, but um, Dan's got a few as well, as you know. Um, I tap blue, and um, hopefully, yeah, we'll get some some youngsters coming through in the future. For the future, we've just bought one from France. Like, they arrived last night. Paul Nichols, um, French prospect. And don't ask me the name because I've been that busy. I've not picked up. All I know, I've got to pay for the invoice and the hay. <laughs> it's that simple, Jed, isn't it? All right, OK, Jed, look, it's great to have you on. Thanks for coming on. Massive day for you out there. We could go on and on and on. I think after Bahrain, you could probably afford to get a few more from France as well. So we look forward to seeing you on the track. All the best, though, this afternoon. Protector at Ding Ding, round two. We'll be cheering for you, Jed. Let's hope so, and uh, good luck, and Thanks for having me. Brilliant stuff. All right, great stuff. Jed Mason then, one of the high-profile owners, of course, of Protector at this afternoon. Uh, talk about future projects. I did promise the viewers a little word about Mr. Policeman yesterday. Uh, Fairy House had a card yesterday. Uh, it was all thought to be about Mr. Policeman's debut. It was very short for the Arkle Kills. What did we make of it? Yeah, it was funny. I was reading the comments pre-race yesterday when Willie Mullins said we, we expected him to win easier than he did. Um, when, when he came out and won over hurdles at, at, at Cork for them last season. And it just made me think, well, maybe he's one of these horses that works better than he runs. I don't know yet. I mean, it's way too early to say, but he didn't look like an out-and-out an Arkle horse there, did he? I mean, he needed every yard to get up. He did make a little bit of a mistake too out. Um, but you wouldn't be quaking in your boots if you had a horse that you were aiming at the Arkle after that run. It's early days. He's only five. It's only his first run mm. over fences. He can get better. But, you know, for... You know, we used to bookmakers just cutting horses, whatever they do. Obviously, there was plenty of money for him and the uncle, and he, but he was pushed out afterwards, and I don't think you can argue with that. Let's go to J-Mac then on the trading floor. Bring you in, Jamie. You've been listening to everything. Uh, of course, you uh, you would have seen Mr. Policeman yesterday. What price did they go for the Arkle Hills? Yeah, I was in charge of the underpost changes yesterday. Uh, we went 12 from 8. I'd agree with what Paul said, really. He did look slightly ponderous over his fences and... It wouldn't be the greatest surprise if they turned their attention maybe to two and a half mile next time. All right, OK, out to 12s then, all you Arkle fans. Could he just be... Uh, yeah, this is absolutely Martin Lewis. Welcome along, financial advice as ever. Uh, and <laughs> and quite wisely so, perhaps pointing us towards the Turners. Looked like a Turners all-star. I guess the one positive was he looked beat and he still won. Well, yeah, he still won, didn't he? You can't knock a horse who just keeps winning. But uh, Because like Kiel says, you just don't know what might still be left in the tank. Maybe he just keeps a little bit to himself. Well, we don't know yet, do we? Yeah, but um, We don't know we'll that much out. about him. The Turners is... Quite possibly Charger's, Charger's final destination as well, isn't he? I know he's 10. Oh, but he, he's well, classical really dream. Well. We've not even had a word about him. He made the hurdles look like a uh, defensive look like they were. Well, he looked very they? good, didn't he? Yeah. You keep him fresh. And what's to stop him going? Yeah, you out love these something? veterans. Get the old the Zimmer frame out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying they're women, but this is where they're going. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Well, we saw it before Heen, didn't we? You know, it can be done. All right. So, OK. Mm. All right. There we go. Winners are what we want, though. Three from three, he was with his tips, of course, last weekend on the big card. Can he do it again, G Rod? But right now, it's time to go and join Lee Moss's head as we go live to the tracks. Live to the tracks we go then, up to St Helens. He's in situation. It's one of our best. Lee Mottisheads, trackside. He is indeed, and he's looking out across Haydock Park. It is relatively white and crusty, Dave. Uh, two weeks ago, I was stood looking out across Flemington Racecourse in Melbourne. 30 degrees, sunshine, warm weather. Today, Haydock's not like that. It's the first time I've been racing this jump season where there is sort of looking at frost on the ground. It'll all come out. It'll all be great. 
but it's a wintry scene and all the better for it. You had to drop it in, didn't you? You got on that Flemington junket again, you blackguard. Uh, well, here you are. I'm delighted you're freezing then in that case. And, nice, thank you. Uh, as ever. And now tell me, it's slightly quicker than we might usually expect for this meeting underfoot? Yeah, I mean, you come to Haydock in the end of November and you expect deep ground. You come to Haydock any time of the year, really, in jump season particularly, and you expect deep ground. Not quite like that. Uh, chase school soft, good to soft in places. To the way around on the hurdle schools, good to soft, soft in places. 5.7 going stick on the chase schools, 6.0 on the hurdle schools. It'll probably ride tiring ground, but this is not the sort of deep... Uh, attritional Hayduck ground that horses like Bristol Demai have been so effective on in recent runnings of the Betfair Chase. Yeah, well, let's talk about the Betfair Chase then, Lee, because, of course, so much said in the week about Harry Cobden staying down at Ascot. Daryl Jacob gets the leg up. Uh, I guess that's the story in itself, Lee. That's kind of been done, hasn't it? But Daryl's won three Betfair Chases, of course. This would be this would be headline stuff, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's the old team reuniting. Um, Paul and Daryl were a number one team for a season. They were Daryl was number one jockey to Paul Nichols. It didn't last that long, but they, they parted in the way that you should part. They parted amicably. Uh, Daryl has remained a loose part of the team. He's been riding out more for Paul this season, and those efforts have been rewarded. And yeah, it is, it is a story. I mean, Paul quite rightly um, explained what had happened and why it had been decided that Harry Cobden should go to Ascot. But I think Harry's comments during the week did convey a sense of slight disappointment and frustration that he's not on Brave Man's game at Haydock. I'd imagine, I'm sure he'd be on Brave Man's game at Kempton, but it does add an extra nuance to the storytelling this afternoon. Oh, there's loads of stories there for you, Lee. I think that we've uh, chatted to Lucinda Russell, of course, about Primoz. She likes that. First. You've got Apples away as well. You've got Bowen's part for Henry Daly. That would be a good story. In the Trevor Hemmings colours as well. Yeah, it would. I mean, and we all know that Henry in those colours had a horse that we thought might be yes. uh, a real superstar in Hillcrest who ran here at Haydock a few seasons ago. My goodness, we've not seen him for a long time. Luck did not favour him. Let's hope that Bowens Park can go on to be a, uh, the real deal. He looks very, very exciting so far. It's a good card all the way through, really, Dave. You know, I think there's a fascinating graduation chase. You mentioned Apple away. We've got Gaillard de Menil, Grand National third. In that race as well, Grey Dawning looked smart last season over hurdles. Red Hot Handicap as well at 2.20, the stairs handicap hurdle. Um, there's, there's lots to like at Haydock today. All built around a better fair chase. Not many runners. It never gets many runners. Um, and arguably, it's not a vintage renewal. But we've got the reigning winner of the King George Six chase. We've got the reigning Grand National winner. We've got the reigning better fair chase winner, Protector at. And who knows what Rob guy could do. It's a good race. Great front page day. The Battle of Britain. Right, Sterling debut on the Morning Post, Lee. Uh, if you're having a fiver today, and the motto said fiver, where's it going? Uh, a bit boring, but I think Slate Lane will win for Emmett Mullins and Donna Mailer in the 220. And I think Gaillard de Manil will win as well. We talk about the trip thing, but I think a good horse is a good horse is a good horse. I think dropping down a trip won't be a massive problem for him. He's given us a double. There you go, viewers. All right, Lee, uh, for people that are out and about doing the Christmas shopping early and they're going to miss the racing and they want to see your reports, what sort of time should they be going to the website? Well, the, the editor would like me to say 5.30. <laughs> More realistically, Dave, 6-ish. <laughs> All right, 6 p.m. I'll be there. Lee, perfect stuff. Go well. Lovely, man. Thank you. He will go well, of course. Just a reminder of those boosts. Look, down there, Pick Dory in the 130 Ascot, 72 out for 5 to 2. And of course, that Goshen all the way out to 5 for so last year's repeat winner. But right now, let's get into the action and see what the guys think about this uh, Haydock card. We're going to give you three races. Good to hear Lee talking up the chances of Guy de Menil. He's giving you a double. Uh, Jamie, let's come to you. Uh, Crambo, a lot of talk about this chap, Slate Lane. We're talking about some very unexposed horses in this well established staying hurdle. Yeah, this is a cracking race. I think uh, obviously there's a lot of small fields today, and this this race stands out like sore thumb as a as a really cracking uh, betting heat. Like I said, Crambo, I think it was front page of the Racing Post on Thursday. Uh, uh, Chris Giles was talking him up, saying he's backed him for the stairs hurdle, and he he was uh, that was reflected in the market here, and he was back down to about eleven to four. But now it looks as though Slate Lane's back challenging for favouritism. Uh, 
they're both pretty easy to make a case for. Crambo won nice and cosily last time from Santos Blue, and Slate Lanes obviously won a couple of races easily, probably with an eye to sneaking in here near the bottom of the weights. So they're both very easy to make a case for, but you can make a case for half a dozen, half a dozen others as well. I think fine margins, an interesting one. Um, similar profile to the one only a matter of time from the Great Wood. Uh, this interesting hasn't been much money for fine margin, but I thought Willie Mullins in his Sport and Life column was reasonably positive. Uh, yeah, you often have to read between the lines as, as he doesn't give too much away, but uh, I think the quote was, he's, he looks like good h way value and he's improving. Uh, so he's interesting. Yeah, it's a good risk. All right, OK, good stuff, Jamie. Thank you. All right, yeah, half dozen uh, Jamie could put up. Kills, so refreshing this week. You've been off. We've not seen any scissors. You've not done any of the shows. Uh, your mate Chris Giles was talking this guy up for the stairs. He got a bit of stick he for that, was, didn't he, yeah, of no, he, Well, he's back to him. Well, when you look at him, I mean, the stairs was one by side of Burlow last year. I mean, he's going to be, what's he going to be, 12 next year? Like, you know what I mean? He's an open division. Paisley yeah. Park won this race on his way to to the stairs. So if he does improve, he needs to improve. Obviously, he's going up the three mile for the first time. He, you know, both him and Slate Lane were shorter earlier in the week than they, than they are now, so they haven't been that strong. And then money's come for plenty. Emmett on three pound well in, he ran really well at Newbury. He's obviously well handicapped uh, on his old start. I like Lord Snooty at a bigger price though for Ooh. Christian Williams. I know he's been prepared for it. Uh, he made a mistake just at the wrong time, he just got crowded on the inside at, at uh, Galway, was it? Galway, yeah, yeah, uh, last time. Um, but this is, this is the race he's been aimed at. He may want a stiffer test. He might want softer ground than it's going to be. But by the same token, you got that really long run in it at uh, Haydock, which I think will suit him. Uh, so he'd be one for me at a double-figure price. He's, he's got a low handicap mark. But it wouldn't surprise me if Crambo is good enough to at least warrant an entry in the stairs hurdle at some point. You've got to remember, he won the EBF final last year. He's come, back, come out and won an entry. So... Um, yeah, keep an eye on him. He's only running off 138. Yeah. Probably makes him about the 10th best hurdler in Britain at the moment, doesn't it? That form has been well backed, hasn't it? Because Santos Blue was second to him last time. Better off at the weights. He's been backed as well for Team Skelton as well. They've got Shonick Jack as well in there, uh, uh, Dan Skelton. That's the nap of Richard Austin in the spotlights. And uh, that was 33s yesterday. That's come all the way in now. Uh, OK, G, what do you like? Yeah, great betting race, this, isn't it? I, we know Christian Williams loves Lord Snooty, doesn't he? He thinks he's got a big future. Um, I really like the top two in the market. I'm very scared of Crambo because he ran in that red hot race last year at Aintree that's thrown out every single winner almost that's run from it. And of course, when he won first time up, I thought the jockey seemed to be at pains to not win as far uh, yeah. <laughs> as, he, as, he, as he might have done. Um, but nevertheless, I thought I saw something a little bit different uh, from Slate Lane at Newton Abbott. Now I know it was a, a very weak race and he went off one to two, but he just did absolutely everything wrong. You know, I mean, he was very keen early on, and I thought, well, it's got him in a serious chance of this getting getting beat. And then as they turned in, he just turned on the jets and, and finished the race off very, very quickly. He ran some very good sectionals. Yeah. It, it, albeit, as I say, on a, on a week in a week race. Well, it was, you know, it might have been week and a half, but the winner, I mean, the winner's a chaser, but he has subsequently won the Durham National and the Here Southern we go, National, Tommy Bow, yeah. But, you absolutely. know what I mean? So oh, yeah. it's not horrific form by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I'm not usually a sucker for these Emmett Mullins horses when they come over here at a short price, but I did like what I saw yeah, that day. Right. And I had a feeling that what might happen was people would look at these two at the top of the market and think, oh, they're short, I'll go and take them on, and they might drift, and that's what's happened. So big I'm, on Slate Lane. I'm big on Slate Lane. All right, OK, I think he's got a right old chance as well. I thought he'd be a lot shorter. Dubrovnik Harry, I caught my eye a little bit as well on his return. He's being backed as well. Harry Fry also is going well double at Ascot yesterday. That's the 220. Let's move on to the Piazza de la Resistance for many today. It's the grade one bet for Chase, of course. One by all the greats over the years, including Protector at last year. We've heard from Jed Mason, J Mac on the trading floor. Where do we stand right now with him and Brave Man's Game? We're currently at uh, four to five Brave Man's Game, five to two Protector at. So since the final decks on Thursday, it's been Kind of one-way traffic, really, with Braves Man Gain being uh, the better back of the pair. Um, I think it's getting to the stage where Protectorat's arguably a touch of value. I, I've not a bet, but I'd, if he drifted anymore, I'd be tempted to back him. I think if the Protectorat of 12 months turns up, then that sets a level that Brave Man's game is... Uh, capable of beating, but I don't think it would be easy. And I think the, the price difference between the two is now arguably getting too great. 
OK, all right. And I notice how you've not been brave enough to boost him again the game, which you did in the Charlie Hall. There was a massive stir about that. He didn't pull it off in the Charlie Hall. Paul's saying that this isn't an afterthought. Where do we sit with this one, Kills? Well, you say it's not an afterthought. I, th I, I think the original plan was one run before the King George. And when it looked like Haydock was going to be bottomless, they said, right, we'll go to the Charlie Hall instead. And he might have been a bit short. But, you know, I mean, we ought to thank Paul Nichols for running him again. Uh, now that he's realised that it's not going to be heavy ground because, I mean, it's a killer. It, it, you know, he's made the race, really. He's ruined my anti-post position to a certain extent because I've been all over Protector Act for, for weeks and weeks and weeks expecting it to be one bad ground and two, everybody to, to chicken out. You must out. have thought something was going to turn up against yeah, him. Yeah, but if it was heavy ground, I'm pretty sure Brave Man's game wouldn't have done. Mm, okay. But Paul Nichols has, has seen that and you know his competitive spirit. He's just got to get out there and do it. And Brave Man's game does have the best form in the race. Is is his win in the um, King George in particular. And the drier the ground, the better his chance and probably the worst protector rat chance. I'm still sticking with protector rat because I think it probably will ride quite dead and it, it is a bit of a specialist track and he just loved it there last year. But I mean, he's facing a lot harder task. He beat Eldorado Allen last year. Yeah. He's a tough, consistent, honorable, you know, admirable horse, Eldorado Allen, but he isn't brave man's game. So it is difficult. I'm still going to be cheering him on. Would I be going in again? I might do. As Jamie said, 5-2 to two has become rather big, I think. Don't think ground for World Cup. I was under the impression he was always going for the Cold Gold yes. Cup. So I'm assuming that ground drying up at Newbury is going to be an issue for him there as well. And Korak Rambler, I don't think you can touch after last time. Uh, he's got a long way. He's got plenty to improve anyway. So I think he probably is between the big two and the price difference is too much now. You, you get the feeling from Lucinda earlier that just watching him hit the line again, Corrin Rambler, is the aim today. And then they're going to, it's all about the spring for him really a little bit. Uh, brave man's protector out. Yeah, no foam mock here, is there, from Paul Nichols? No fear of missing Cheltenham <laughs> girls, is there? From, no. Hey, from ring Nichols. the bell. Brave man's game. Uh, great to see him running. Um, however, I would always want to back the horse that I know this has been the target for. And we know, as you said to, to Jed, uh, this is his FA Cup final protector at Skelton. will have him at absolute concert pitch for this. Brave man's game, they were, like Kiel said, they were umming and ahhing over the Charlie Hall. Then, and then they've decided to do both, which has surprised everyone. At the prices has to be protector out for me, Dave. All right, two votes for protector. I think Brave Man's game with the, on this ground will show what he's all about today. Daryl Jacob can get a fourth Betfair chase. All right, then let us know what you like. Keep your comments coming in below. We'll open up the social floor after we finish off the card at Haydock because we're going to look at the 335 next. J Mac, uh, a staying handicap and uh, famous bridge. Nicky Richards, late Trevor Hemmings colours. It looks like this guy has got more to come as a stayer and he's really popular with your market. Price wise, of course, Tom C. Gal put up Bally Bodie as well as one of his best. I think it's, it's uh, Barley Body. I think uh, not something I'm often accused of having, but um, yeah, Famous Bridge is uh, uh, really strong, two to one. He just just does have that really progressive profile of a Nicky Richards uh, chaser. Should love coming back up to three miles, and he's. I think this is the last TV race of the day. Is Around two to one, he's going to be an awful result. So I guess we'd be cheering on anything but him. I can tell you that. I... Would you call him Bally Bodie? I don't know. <laughs> My eyes. <laughs> Just read the words yeah. as they are. Bally Bodie. Bally What's Bodie. He'll do for me. Uh, I can see why Tom's gone for him. Anyway, listen. I, I don't. I, I was never going to say Bally Bodie in this panel, was I? Let's face it. This is a race that I found very tricky. I, I got told about Famous Bridge right at the start of his career that they thought he was doing Nicky Rich as one of the best for, for the next couple of years. He hasn't quite shown it yet. He's a bit short here, hasn't he? i tell you what he did last time, though, because I, I, I think he'll win. I'm, you know, I'm a bit disappointed to see his twos now because he was bigger than that when I was on the train this morning. But um, I, he come back with a career best on RPRs over two and a half mile, and he's a definite three mile. He's already run three miles over hurdles. He's got to be better than that. So career best, first time out, wrong trip. He's going to be better yeah. than that. I think he'll probably show it here. He should like the trip uh, at the track as well, I think. Uh, you're currying favour with our ambassador, of course. Uh, yeah, I quite like this race from a punting perspective because there's a race at Carlisle that uh, was running a really good time last time. And I tipped a horse in the paper the other day called Mario de Pal, which finished fourth in that race, same race at Carlisle. And I thought it would definitely win at Foss Lass for Peter Bowen. And they lined up and it got kicked at the start. And the jockey ended up 
coming off and uh, was withdrawn at the start with jockey injured. Okay. Um, so the horse that the horses that I'm interested in are Wasdale Dundalk, who was second in the race, and Hort Esteem, who was fifth in the same race. The money's came for come for Hort Esteem uh, overnight and uh, into the day. You're so. just trolling me with pronunciations of horses. <laughs> <laughs> Hort Esteem. Um, yeah, right. yeah. No, he shaped quite well uh, that day. He's got a four pound pull with Wasdale Dundalk. I'm going to have a bit on Wasdale Dundalk as well because he's kind of improving summer jumper. He'll like quickening ground but I do think that Hort Esteem has got a serious chance of reversing the places Sorry, so those two for me surely. Bally Booty it is for me Bally Booty <laughs> <laughs> it's the Barley Body of course alright thank god J-Max here right okay that's Haydock done and dusted you've got the tips Fav wins the last says Kills we've got a social coming in I'm here and we'll open up the floor again and Keith comes in and says, if BMG, Brave Man's Game, gets beaten, you will have to worry about the Gold Cup form. This is, of course, referencing horses that have placed in the way, you know, um, I suppose we've got Galloping coming out, a word about him coming up. Well, we can, talk, we can talk about that later, but the other thing about the Gold Cup, is not necessarily worrying about the Gold Cup form. I think it was really good, but it's how many horses come out of a battle in the Gold Cup and don't show the same form again. It's, it, yeah. it, 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 you won't say it happens year on year, but it happens enough to make you worry about what they're going to do the next year, not necessarily that the form isn't good. Yes, yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it? It's what did that race take out of those It's a bit horses. of an elephant in the room that he didn't win the Charlie Hall, I suppose, isn't it? It is a little bit. No one's really, you know, there's a lot said about it at the time. I remember Bruce Millington mm. messaged me straight after when, how on earth did that get beat? Gentleman's game, of course, is a decent horse. All right, great question, that. Keep them coming in. If you want to know why horses are drifting or being backed, you've got J-Matt, you've got G-Rod, and you've got Kills as well to get your questions into. But it's down to Ascot we go, where the sun is indeed shining. Minus two overnight, said Chris Stickles, and uh, tacky ground temperatures rising at 11. A uh, lot said about the runners on this car, but look, it's not last year, is it? Go back 12 months when Constitution Hill was supposed to turn up here. Dry ground didn't happen, did it? All right, shall we get the first of our previews at Ascot underway? Because we've got David Jennings waiting on the line for us, of course, to talk to us about all things Punchestown this weekend. Uh, Shorty now, isn't he, J-Mac? Uh, 1.30, it's Ascot. You think Shishkin's going to win because you're boosting Pick Dory. I do, to be honest, yeah. I think uh, if Shishkin's anywhere near his best, he's got a fair margin for error here over Pig Dory, which is why we're happy to boost uh, the Nichols horse. Uh, he's four to seven Shishkin, which is, might be too short for punters. So we've got some uh, doubles and trebles, etc. So he's, you can back him at uh, five to one to win today in the King George, 18 to win today in the Gold Cup, or to win all three races, you can have 33 the treble. Um, another reason I'm quite happy to uh, boost pick door is, is because if Shishkin does run the odd stink and if he did that today I don't, I don't actually think pick Dory will be a certainty to beat Manella Drama I think Ooh. Manella Drama's been 12 to 1 uh, they've been quite well back now but uh, he was 12 to 1 14 to 1 after the final decks and they ran against each other at Aintree uh, Manella Drama made a mistake of the last and was only beaten about 7 lengths and he's 6 pound better off today Manila Drama's also had the benefit of a run, so I'd argue that, uh, there might not be too much between them today, and the, the price difference between those two has been mm. too big too big throughout the week. The workings of the mind of J-Mat, top trader at William Hill, then. Uh, five to one, Manila Drama, that's short, isn't it? Now, come on, is this just like, it's just not just looking at gift horse in the mouth, just, this is the Akka horse of the day, I think, isn't it? This just is goes a, and wins. Great Shishkin, who was going to run in the Betfair chase, Definitely, unless it was heavy ground. And it's not heavy ground, and here he is. <laughs> um, don't, that's not classic, to go about the ground. Classic no, Nicky Henderson. But yeah, I mean, you know, you can't argue that he hasn't found a right race because he's four or seven here, yeah. and he'd have been, he'd have been third favourite. Classic at Endo, yeah. He's so, flying, um, no Endo, isn't he? But yeah, I mean, he's a fantastic horse, Shiskin. I mean, yeah. he beat Pictori 16 lengths here in February. Pictori might not have been his best, but. If Shishkin's anywhere near his best, he just wins. Uh, we've got to hope he turns up now, haven't we, of course. Yeah, so uh, well, I, hope he, I hope he does turn up. Cheap pieces, they've like, got to have a quick word Yeah, well, I know, but that's a funny thing. <laughs> Nicky Henderson said, uh, I don't think he's made them jump them any quicker, was what he said, wasn't <laughs> it, in the paper the other day. So I think Shishkin is just going to be Shishkin, but he's got so much talent, hasn't he? He's a very, very good horse, and yeah. he should be too good. I like Pickdoor. He's been a real, 
real slow burner. Yeah. Because remember, he was you know he was a second season novice last year before coming through to win Grade Ones. Like, you know what I mean? And he does seem to keep going forwards, but he's got to, still got to go forwards in a big way. Yeah, of course, he has won here, of course, G. Uh, but that was, you know, his one defeat last year was against Shishkin. How do we see? He's got a forecast, something crazy uh, for us here? Not really. I mean, once the once that motor goes into overdrive for Shishkin, it'll be lights out for everything else, won't it? I mean, we've seen it two or three times. When we last year, when he needed the Ascot chase, he looked all beaten, all ends up at Aintree and then motored home. He's just yeah. got an amazing engine. And I expect he'll win and win easily. He's an emperor of a horse, I can tell you. He's an, he's an, if you're going there today, just go and get a look at one horse in the paddock. It's Shishkin. He is an absolute majestic individual. And uh, yeah, Let's just hope this is win. And then on to King George, because, of course, King George could be the race on everyone's lips after Brave, Brave Man's game. Protect out my... I don't know. It's the big race, of course, on Boxing Day. Anti-post-wise, it will be there. Right, let's move on, shall we? Because it's boost time again, J-Mac. Uh, let's go back up to the William Hill offices and tell us why. Do I why? Goshen is such a big price with you guys. Obviously, we wouldn't want anyone to think this show is just thrown together last minute. So when we, we were discussing this yesterday afternoon and Goshen was about two to one, nine to four, and we thought, well, if we could boost them to three to one, we'd be happy enough with that. But he's drifting, drifting. We have ended up uh, boosting them to five to one, which uh, Paul said has got to too big. And it's, it's hard to disagree, really. He's not the most reliable, but these, I mean, he won this last year. Right hand is obviously the, the way he needs to go. So five to one probably is overly generous. Uh, to, uh, hopefully, from our point of view, Thea to Glory might be one to beat him. She she looks uh, she's reliable, condition suit, and uh, she might save the day for us. Yeah, well, Theatre Glory was a lot of people's original pick, wasn't she, Paul, during the week? But now she's like 15 to 1. I mean, this is a market that has just gone bonkers since yeah, it it's opened a, up. Yeah, it is an absolutely mad market. I mean, I got a text from a, a friend of mine saying he got a back strong leader for this race, and I looked at him, hang on me, if he's tailed off last time. Now, I know he was a good novice, but, you know, OK, 7 to 1 probably was quite good, big at the time, looking at what he is now. But, I mean, gosh, on 7 to 2 there, 5 to 1 with a boost, you get a bullseye on that. I mean, that is... That's just too big. I mean, yeah, he's he's the best horse in the race. He won the race by eight and a half lengths last year on good ground. Remember, mm. uh, he's had a run on the flat. Okay, it wasn't a great one. My my interest in him will will double if he makes the running. I'm sick of him being held up because nearly all of his nearly all of his best form is when he just goes out in front and burns them off. Uh, and hopefully he will do that here over over a trip that he loves. He does stay further. And yeah, I'm I'm. I'm Still, probably a bit of a Goshen fanboy. I do like the horse, um, and if I was going to back something else in the race, it'd be the complete outsider, so royal, and none of the others. I'll be laying Blue King to move for all places. I think he's got absolutely tons to find. He should be the outsider. Yeah, Paul's quite bullish about it. I know him, he is. Though. I know he is. But yeah. he's a four-year-old rated 138. I mean, what, what is yeah. Goshen 150? They're rolling something? the dice here, aren't they? Steve? They are. They yeah. are. I mean, he's just he's just too short. He's, he's a nice horse, but he's just Ought too short. Ought to be short. the outsider. Yeah, the yeah. horse that he beat at Cheltenham last time cruised into the race at Ascot yesterday mm. behind Jim Coco, and probably is one of them that might have a think about. He's, he's quite talented. I forget his name, Jigami or something like that. I mean, anyway. the, the thing with Goshen is, is to, to my eye, his form swings have always been erratic, but they're getting more erratic as he gets older, aren't they? Ascot, aren't he? He's good at Ascot, but I think he's won, he's run one decent race his last four. He's been beaten an absolute mile on three of his last I four I spoke starts, to so. Hayley more about this chap after the says. I said, what happened with the says? Because he he's always well backed, isn't he? Wherever mm. he goes into eight to one for that or something. Well, it? I mean, the time guys were saying it was good ground. He just it? didn't really turn up, but she said it's, it, it's because my dad rides it. And she's not, you know, all trainers are kind to their favourite horses. And, and so I reckon we might see a different Goshen here. So there's an insight. I'm not sure that's his sort of race anyway. It came with a big old field, and he does like these sort of small field races. Yeah. I'm with strong leader. Um, for all that Kiel's hated, he's run first time up. Um, I just don't think we saw the right strong leader okay. that day, did we, for one reason or another. And if you go back and watch his run at Aintree last season, you will not see all finish faster than strong leader coming home behind in the pocket. Yeah. He will definitely He loves suited. Aintree, doesn't he? Because he won his maiden now or whatever mm. it was. Or, or but his he'll be novice. suited by two and a half miles here. Yeah. This will be the first time he's gone up to this trip. He, he could is bring a all sorts of improvement. I mean, when I, when I tipped him yesterday, he was completely outside of the field. Now he's second favourite. doesn't entirely surprise me that Fiat Glory's favourite because when it's Fiat Glory and Gosham and last season at Sandown, yeah. Peter Glory was favourite that On day. On horrible ground so, that she doesn't like, and at yeah, Warwick the time so. before that, she might 
just get out Trappy and Trappy race, isn't it? Trappy race. I wouldn't be with Theatre Glory now at these prices. Uh, I don't know what I'd be. I think So Royal is interesting. Yeah, absolutely. He's the, he's the veteran, like Kills says. But Trappy race to me now at the prices. A lot of people, like yourselves, will be on the Hendo double. Final race at Ascot coming up. We've got DJ waiting in the wings for our Irish angle. But we must talk about the 315. J Mac again, Boot Hill. It's all about back to back winners this morning, isn't it? Because Boot Hill took it out last year. He's higher in the weights. How's he been sitting with Hills? Uh, he's reasonably popular, but uh, I think, again, he's one we're quite happy to take on. There quite a few of these ran in the course and distance handicap three weeks ago, and uh, Boot Hill won nicely enough, but a couple of others, I can see why they might turn around the form. St. Seagull touched 2.6 and running, probably got an overly aggressive ride, and the bottom horse, the Dan Skelton horse, travelled really went well into the race, touched 3.4 and running, and weakened out of it. So if you Maybe it was just fitness related, and he can go close today. Uh, Boot Hill was nine to four on Thursday after the final decks, and we were happy to take him on. He's drifted a little bit to eleven to four, but we're we're still reasonably happy to be against him. <sighs> he's been majestic on his day around Ascot, isn't he? Um, you're taking him on kills. Mm. Uh, no, I do know. Give us the case. Yeah, right. Well, well, there was one horse that, to me, at the prices last night, absolutely stood out and been all day, and that was Fun and Bill Civiler, who was 16 then, and, it, and is now half that. Hopefully, Hills are going to give it a little boost. Uh, we will see. Um, yeah, look, it was soft ground last time. It was first time out. He got beat 20 lengths. He ran like a horse who needed the run. Now, he was rated, he's been dropped three pounds for that. Boot Hill's gone up six. He gets five pound off Ned Fox. He's got a thirty odd percent strike rate mm. for the yard, and he's a good up and coming jockey. Venetia Williams is absolutely flying. She's had fifteen winners from forty runners in November. That's the second highest total she's ever had in November. Only two behind, but she had twice as many runners then. That was back in two thousand and fourteen. The last time Fran and Bill Silver ran on decent ground was in the Game Spirit last year, where he absolutely hacked up, beat um, Grenatine and. Uh, and Elixir yes. Nuts. He likes decent ground. It's better ground this time. He's essentially running off 148 with the five pound claim, which is 15 pound lower than he started last season. Uh, I think he's got a massive chance. Yeah, I can tell that kills absolutely. He's rather convincing there, Gvod, isn't he? Yes, I, the argument for him is very similar to the horse that won there yesterday. Hold that torch, isn't it? Very uh, to get well that in, handicapped. Was that your winner in the paper? That was was my it? one winner in the paper uh, yesterday. Yeah, very well handicapped horse who had shown nothing, and then suddenly Venetia flying comes back. I like Triple Trade. What's not to like about Triple Trade? He's in the form of his life. He's won mm. three of his last four starts. He's run two really good times. His last two starts at Cheltenham. He's he's a pound well in under a five pound penalty for that win last time. I think he's absolutely sure to run well. The argument is maybe the handicap has got him, but I still think he'd be bang there. All right, I like St. Seagull for what it's worth. Tom Zors, um, I thought he ran, looked like he was going to really spread Eagle and last time, but just needed the run, I think. Hold on to him a little bit more. Jane Williams is also can understand why he is as short as 4 to 1. Right, stick around, because we've got anti post look coming up. We've got the naps, of course, but it's time to go across the Irish Sea because uh, everyone's favourite, my favourite, absolutely. David Jennings waits on the line, Deputy Irish Editor. DJ, good morning. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Ah, oh, marvellous and always good to have you on. We better crack on with this, DJ, because you're kicking off at 11.40. We're going to take a, a Sunday Sizzler look at the John Dirk and ourselves. But, of course, it's this marvellous weekend. We're used to it being a week before, aren't we? You're all jigging everything around over there. It's Morgiana Day. It is indeed, yeah. It's one of these big weekends. They all come thick and fast, one after the other. We had the Navin Racing Festival last weekend. We had Down Royal the weekend before. It's Punch Den this weekend. And then it's the Fairy House Winter Festival next weekend. Of course, the three great ones at Fairy House. So, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of it at the moment. And I think, as is the case in, in Britain today, Dave, I think it's it's a case of uh, quality over quantity. We don't have many runners in the big race, but we have got State Man. Similar story tomorrow, even though it's probably a stronger race to Durkin. And uh, any day you have Gallop in the Shams run is a good day. And I suppose you could apply the same comments to State Man. And you're back in situ, of course, having been in Gloucester last weekend. You made it out of there, so congratulations for that, first and foremost. Uh, you've mentioned State Man. We're expecting that to be a penalty kick. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's it's disappointing. It's a terrible race, really. Um, there's just not... Like, when you take out Constitution Hill out of the champion hurdle, you've only got Imperi Pass and Statement. That's it. That's it. Like, if you were told now that any other horse other than Constitution Hill Statement or Imperi Pass would win the champion hurdle, you'd say you're absolutely bonkers. And uh, it's true. I think I think Statement will do what he always does. I think uh, Statement's trump card is that he's so professional. You can put him where you want in a race. He's a slick jumper. He can make his run if he has to. 
He can sit in behind Phil Sudaris today if he has to as well. It doesn't really matter to him. He's just a very good, rock-solid, top-class horse who's just not quite as good as Constitution Hill. But at the moment, he's better than everybody else over here anyway, over hurdles. And uh, it'll be interesting to see in Perry Pass and the Hatton's Grace hurdle next week because, obviously, he's the other one from the Willie Mullins stable. He's firing two bullets at Constitution Hill this year and we're getting to see the first one today. Yes, it's embarrassment of riches time for Team Mullins and Close Sutton, isn't it? This is usually the weekend where the best Mullins novices come out. It's almost like DJ, if you don't know the narrative out there they talk to each other at the top table and they say, Gordon, you can have the start of the season Henry, you can come involved when it gets to Navin and then Willie, we'll let your novices come out and win, right? Yeah, they've got their favourite track so we kind of know by now that it's like Down Royal, Navin usually Fairy House for Gordon and for Willie, it's 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 Punchestown it's Nace, it's Gorham Park um, and it, 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 that tends to be the narrative of the season. And then, as Christmas comes, they kind of we will get one or two clashes at Leperstown. But unfortunately, we won't get most of the clashes until Cheltenham in, in March. And, and that's probably the problem, really. You know, the the blinding lights of of Cheltenham is, is ruining a lot of the rest of the season because we won't find out the best of the best in the various divisions until Cheltenham in March. Uh, but we have got a lot of good horses running this weekend. Um, we have a good maiden hurdle, obviously today. You've got Predators Gold against Mossy Fen Park, who I know Henry. Bramhead is, is a big fan of. Uh, we've got Gaelic Warrior over fences and um, it's going to be interesting that race because there, there are good horses against uh, Gaelic Warrior. You know, I know the way you're thinking was a real high catcher. He poked your eye out of Fairy House last time. Um, I think he's a proper horse. Whether today is going to be the day we see, you know, how good I know the way you're thinking is. I'm not quite sure. He's probably not as good as Gaelic Warrior, but he's a very good horse. So I think we're going to learn a lot, Dave. And of course, we've got Sunday <coughs> coming up as well. Before we get a couple of tips off you as well. Honestly, there's so many novices to ask you about. It's ridiculous. Ballyburn, of course, goes. It, 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 is it Cork he's lining up at? Uh, I think so. I think I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the crowd here. Does Ballyburn run tomorrow? No, just not yeah, I, I I think he was he he was entered anyway. I'm not sure All if right, he was declared, okay. but maybe, maybe he was. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, I, I I only did three quarters of my homework last night, Dave, because the <laughs> toy show was on in Ireland, and uh, it's a big deal. It's the late late toy show, and uh, I had to end my homework before that started for the kids. So uh, I have a, a valid excuse. Tully Hill comes out, of course. He's another talking horse, isn't he? We saw him with Dream to Show and, and, and the likes of that. Uh, DJ, of course, we've got the John Durkin tomorrow as well, so it's a double header for you. A, what do you like singly? Where's the five euros going for DJ's pocket today? And what do we make of the John Durkin B tomorrow? Uh, I, I think I think um, if, if you were to give me a choice of whether I would rather back Stateman in the Morgiana or, or Gallop in the Champs, obviously in the in the John Durkin, I think Stateman is less to do. I think he's got an easier assignment than uh, than uh, Gallop in the Champs has. One horse who will, I'm pretty convinced, will run well in the in the John Durkin. I don't think we saw the best from last season was appreciated. And speaking to Patrick Mullins during the week about appreciated, he's pleasing them in Clysotten at the moment, and he's kind of an underachiever for what they think of him. You know the stuff they were talking about him last season suggests he was the next big thing he was the Arkel horse rather than El Fabiolo for the first half of the season he didn't really produce the goods but maybe this season is the season when appreciate it will we'll, we'll show just what Willie Mullins thinks of him and uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was the one to give to give um, Gallop and the Shams most to think about as regards the best bet of the day I like two at, at Punchestown today uh, I think the best race of the weekend is the grade two novice chase at, uh, at Punchestown today it's off at I'll just get the time for you now it's the 123 it's the Leem and Valerie Brennan, Florida Pearl Novice Chase. It's three miles, it's a cracker. We've got Flooring Porter, but we've also got the second and third from the Albert Bartlett in Afferdale Fury and uh, Sander Clegan. And I, I am keeping the fate with Sander Clegan. I think he's got the most ability in the race. Um, he ran over two miles on the inside track at Ferry House. And if you could get a set of terms and conditions that was against a horse, you would never find anything as big as the inside track over two miles for Sander Clegane. He's a proper stayer who wants a proper gallop and track. He gets both of those today and uh, in a really hot race, I think Sander Clegane is going to be very hard to beat at 123. And one further one in the in the 158, it's the Ryan's Cleaning Handicap Chase. Um, I'm going to give Walkaway another chance for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore. He's three in the race. Rachel has picked Walkaway. We've only seen him twice in the last two years. Um, you know, he's bumped into some good horses over the years and, and this is his best chance. He's rated 130. I think he's better than that. 
Oh, wow, I'm glad that you mentioned that novice chase, and uh, I, th I thought you might be going for Sandor. It could just be the Albert Bartlett. Turns out to be an absolute worldie of a race against Racing Twitter's uh, best wishes. All right, DJ Sterling as ever. You can do no wrong, man. You've even got a halo behind your head, look, at the moment. That's incredible. Oh, I can do a lot wrong, <laughs> let me tell you this. Well, You've I'm sure your missus idea. would would concur with that one. DJ, go well. We can't wait to read your reports, man. Cheers, Dave. Brilliant stuff. That's the Irish angle from David Jennings. Right, we're going to talk about the Dong Jerk in tomorrow. That's our Sunday says. I nearly got that pronunciation wrong. Uh, who wants some free bets, though? Stay ahead of the field and get those free bets if you've not done so so far. That's how you do it. And what would you place your free bet on in the John Durkin tomorrow, Paul Keeling? I probably agree with DJ and go for appreciate it, funnily enough. I mean, it's just a case of I wouldn't back a horse at two's on that's just running that just, just won in a goal won a gold cup and then got beat next time mm. out. Um we we'll, we'll remain to see. I mean, you know, it's only two mile three and a half furlong. I don't think that's far enough for fast or slow. So you're looking for something else. Blue Lord Potentially interesting. The steering for Lange has got some cracking form to his name and, and likes punches down. And but at the prices, I, you know, I think appreciate he's a very talented horse, isn't he? What do we expect for fast or slow? Because he's he's, he's still oh. a relatively young horse, isn't he? Yeah, I think he was further, isn't he? Mm. Mm. Yeah, it looks it looks like he's just out there and we'll slowly build up as the season goes on. This is a starting point, doesn't it? Yeah. it, it if there's, I mean, a lot's been said about target trainers, and aren't they all just target trainers this week? And I, I, I agree with that to a certain extent. You mentioned Lord Snooty today. If, if, if there's one trainer over here that you see a seven next to a name mm. and then goes for a big race, it's going to be Christian Williams. It's also Martin Brassel, isn't it, of course? And he's probably just mm. all about one day with it. There's him, some disappointing it? horses in this race, aren't there? Blue Lord, Asterian, Falange, Appreciate. Blue Lord disappointing, is he? Oh, he's oh, They've all, they've, all yeah, I mean, threatened, they've all threatened to be top better class. than they've turned out, haven't they? From Galloping. But whether they're, whether they're disappointed or not, it's because we end up expecting too much of horses. Did you get, call Galloping the shot disappointing? No, no, no. no we got yeah. beaten, didn't he, after the Gold Cup? A lot of people yeah, well, that was, a, that, that was a disappointment. In, yeah. in in terms of the betting and all that, but he's not a disappointing horse, is he? I mean, he carried all before just him until then. Just punches down crazy. For and him. it was, you know, it was a case of after the Lord Mayor show as well. He's been, right. you know, geared up for that. But horses who have won gold cups have quite often not come back the same. So we've got to wait and see. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't back him at it, two's on to do It was so. a big performance, wasn't it? When yeah, he won okay. the Gold Cup. All right, that's the Sunday sizzler for you then. 2.20 tomorrow at Bunchestown. Whether you're having a bet or not, whatever you think about it, you must be watching that. OK, time now to go for our anti-post race. Now, you can see the under the big eight race entries on the Racing Post website. Just go across the top of it. And if you're on the William Hill website, it's future races. And 9th of December, fast approaches. Yes, this is the final weekend, would you believe it, of November. We'll soon be getting festive at the Tingle Creek. Uh, J-Mac, give us the prices here. What price is John Bond? He is one to three. He was four to seven prior to his win last Sunday. He's now one to three. Uh, obviously, Captain Guinness also won last weekend. Hopefully, he'll come over because outside of the, of the third in, Edward Stone, who was uh, beaten comprehensively by John Bond. So the, the race probably needs Captain Guinness to come over. Uh, but there is one or two potential movers. You, long press, I think they've said... This is a potential starting point for him. He's, he, they didn't want to start him back in a race like the Coral Gold Cup. So if the ground's soft uh, and he's a confirmed runner, he might be a shortener from the 10 to 1 because he's got, yeah, on just on terms of pure ability, he's got a broadly similar level to John Bond. Obviously, the coming d down in trip will be the uh, issue. And Boot Hill is, uh, Harry Fry, I think, has said that this might be on the agenda if he ran well today. He's off 155 today. So you'd expect him to be in the 160s if he wins today, and that would put him in the mix as well. Thank you, J-Mac. All right, OK, it's come to this. I've got a strong opinion on this race. Well, you go away, mate, because we don't agree with you. Well, I've, got a, don't. I've got a strong <laughs> opinion on this race. <laughs> Two horses ran last weekend. One ran at Cheltenham, that was John Bond, did what he had to. Let's face it, he, he, he pretty much destroyed Edward Stone, didn't he, first time out. Uh, and the other one was Captain Guinness at Narvan. And I watch it back, Captain Guinness. He's never really been all that I've really been with. I must admit, I was with him last Saturday because I thought it was too big to beat uh, Dysart Dynamo. And he absolutely thrashed him. And it's a long time since I've seen a two-miler jump as well as Captain Guinness did. He's a younger horse than you expect. When you look at Racing Post ratings, it's not. I know that John Bond beat him at, uh, at Sandown. 
um, w w when they signed off. But I just got a feeling. If you think about Henry de Bromhead's two miles, they all get better with age. Sizing Europe won an Arkle at eight. Special Tiara was a veteran when he did it. Yeah, Sizing Europe would have won a I champion am all six, over <laughs> Captain Guinness for this. <laughs> I'm massively all over it. I think five to one is way too big. I think John Bond's way too short. I think the 20 to one for the champion chase and Captain Guinness is obscene. I think the market's gone too hard on El Fabiolo, who has jumping issues. All right, I know that Captain Guinness is yet to get into that 170 rank, but if he keeps that form that he did last Saturday, watch it back. It was an unbelievable jumping can, performance. Can we, can we, Guinness is going to pour can it Can we on. put this in the can? All on the captain! Can we put this in the can and play it back in March? I can't oh, wait yeah. to watch this. Wait, what price is he, J-Mac, for the, for the champion <laughs> chase? You can see finally I'm getting excited. Uh, it's 20 to 1, and it actually, from a, it makes sense from an each-way point of view, because... I mean, outside of the big two, you're, you're already struggling for runners. It could easily be a four, five, six runner race. So uh, I wouldn't put you off from yeah. an each way perspective. It's completely mad. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah you're completely mad. You really, the Dice Light Dice has got a massive hold in him. I mean, he, yeah, he, but he's he, the he, horse that John Bond and the El Fabiola have been beating. He's a complete nut. Yeah, yeah, you gave think, him £10, Captain Guinness. He yeah, thrashed he's, him. He's got a hold in him. I mean, Navin, it's like that. Up the straight there. I mean, there was no chance whatsoever that was getting home. He's three from three at Anyone back in the captain? Look, I, I've, I've Look, come on the captain. All right, you, 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 you come on, mate. I've spent most of the last two seasons trying to oppose John Bond because I have this childish thing about not wanting horses to do well when they're hyped up when, before they've done anything. Or pundits. And Well, yeah, or pundits, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, John Bond came with a load of hype and there was part of me was sort of childishly, I hope he fails, but, I mean... It, bit pathetic really but <laughs> I've always been I've always thought that this is a horse that's going to want two and a half miles it's going to but but last week he looked more and more like a two miler than 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 he ever has didn't done. have an easy race did he we absolutely certain done. he's going to turn up it of course he's going to turn up yeah, it's not because he's going to say one, one we've got a dryish spell coming so it isn't going to be bottomless back it isn't going to be bottomless ground it'll have, the weather will have to change dramatically and then in the, within the, the next two weeks because it wasn't bad there uh, at the last All meeting right. and the chase track is 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 faster than the hurdles track anyway can we just so, agree that threes on is yeah, a bit obscene no i think it's a certainty i think it's a Right, okay. I mean, I, I don't bet for his on shots, but what beats him? Long press. Well, you'll be there, and you're going to have a go. Yeah. He, he looked better than than ever. He looked, better. He look, he yeah, looked so better. So did Captain ever. Guinness. I'm telling you, he, this was a serious performance last week. It was a brilliant. It was not John Bond serious. It was not John Bond serious. And and before Nicky... he went to Aintree and Sandown last right. year, he was running to 160s. Right, that's right. what he does. Mid 160s, mm. John Bond. Right, that's, that's what Captain Guinness does. And we've yet to right. see the best yeah, of Captain but, Guinness. But, but John Bond's going to go for. I mean, I, I when Nicky came out after the article and said, oh, I'm not sure. John Bomb was at his best. I took that with a pinch of, thought, of salt and thought, oh, this is a load of rubbish. But then I've seen him run since a couple of times, eight tree, sand down, and then again this week. Oh, and I'm starting to think maybe Nicky was right. Maybe he wasn't right on the uncle. Maybe he'll beat El Fabiolo. Well, there you go. The market suggests he will. He's then to five to two or something like that. Right, OK, it's nap time. Let's get out of that one. Uh, I'm sure you're going to love that socially. Charlie Sharp's doing all the all the clipping for us. That's going to fly, isn't it? Absolutely. That's on the 9th of December. Then it's Tingle Creek. We will be morning posting that morning for you as well. Right, nap time. Uh, J-Mac, listen, you got William Twee, William Wee, he went last time at Lingfield. So we'll give you the floor as you go for back-to-back -back naps. Yeah, I'm going to know my fate nice and early. It's 11.40 punches down, Lark in the morning, who's a horse had in my tracker even before his debut after he ran uh, really well in a barrier trial at Dundalk. I think there's really good races on the flat to be won with them. Uh, if he was with other connections, other uh, his own obviously Sean Moran loves Cheltenham. I think they'd only be switching to hurdles if they thought they had uh, Cheltenham pretensions. And uh, he's a big drifter, which is a bit of a worry after a long absence, but... Uh, I'd be disappointed if he wasn't capable of winning a maiden hurdle. And this is, these are all boosted, guys. These are all now live on the site. This is one of the most popular points, of course. All right, so it's in the opener at Punchestown, goes J Mac uh, McBride, the top trader, uh, with, uh, of course, what's it called? Lark in the morning. All right, Joseph O'Brien. I'm going to try and open the card in a flyer for you up at Haydock. Long gone as that 15 to 8 about Bones Park. But it's the boost out there. This is Henry Daly's all. So impressed was I with him in bumpers last year. Should have probably won at Aintree, where he met loads of trouble on the home turn and he flew home. Watch him back at Stratford. My goodness gracious me. Is this the best of the British? Johnny Dean thinks so in his column this morning. I'm with Johnny there. G 
your just stand up. Yeah, you're due a winner, aren't you, Dave? Oh, thank yeah. you very much for that. <laughs> Let's hope that we get we get uh, the, the, the the lucky fifteen up today. Uh, Slate Lane for me to go for two for two. Uh, I thought he would look something special when he won at Newton Abbott. And I think Mullins will have him bang on here. So yes. Slate Lane, 220 at Haydock. My yeah. nap nice and boosted by J-Mac. Absolutely, the J-Mac boost it's now known as your, of course, Fernambul. Uh, Fernambul Civilla, if he runs to the level of form he ran to when he won the game spirit, it would take a big career best uh, for something to beat him. And he's back on the same ground. All right, brilliant stuff. It has been a pleasure having you with us just over an hour, weren't we, in the end? Could we cram any more into you than that? Go back, look at Lucinda Russell, look at Jed Mason, David Jennings giving us everything from Ireland. The boys giving us all the previews from Haydock and Ascot. Lee Motta said join the show as well. It's been absolute fun. Well done to the guys in the gallery. Jay Mack, that was superb stuff, man. Go well this week. Thank you. Yep, I hope everyone enjoys uh, the weekend racing. Lovely. Well done, gentlemen. To the cafe we go. To the cafe we go, yeah. Absolutely superb. Time for breakfast, isn't it? It is time for our breakfast. Let's hope you've enjoyed yours and this week's morning post. Like, subscribe, comment and share. There's loads of sport out there. Don't forget the John Durkin tomorrow. Enjoy it. <laughs>